It is awesome to see how Gainsight has grown up through the years and with it, customer success management, or actually the other way around, how customer success management has really become an industry and Gainsight has been a part of that. We've got an awesome closing session for you today with an all-star lineup of CEOs. And the first one we're gonna introduce is a longtime personal friend, was actually a mentor to me when I was a CEO back 16 years ago now, is an advisor to the stars. Many of our CEOs in and around this industry have turned to him for advice and perspective through the years. And he recently surprised the world when he stepped back into the CEO slot several years ago to jump in as CEO of DocuSign and take them to what has now been widely reported as unicorn status. And so we've got a little teaser to introduce Keith Kroc, ladies and gentlemen. Your dreams will determine your thoughts. Your thoughts will determine your words. Your words will determine your habits and your habits will determine your character and your destiny. And I think the same thing is true uh, for a company. Round of applause for Keith Kroc, please. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. <laughs> That's it, come on. There we go. <laughs> you would expect nothing less, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one more round of applause, Keith. The nice high kick there. Oh. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me, Barry. Uh, okay, so we've got to open with uh, the thought I had years ago and, and the teaser here to this group, which was essentially, what the heck were you thinking? Um, and I, I actually mean that very seriously, which is you'd achieved what most people would consider every level of success. You were uh, CEO of Ariba through the rocket ship ride, one of the most successful IPOs in history. Uh, you had retired, uh, quite financially successful, but personally successful. You were traveling the world, you were jumping in and out of board sessions, could essentially do anything you wanted with your time, and of all things, you decided to come back and work your butt off as CEO again. Why? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy question for me. It, we have great benefits at Doggy Sign. We have a great pension. <laughs> it's obviously for that. The masseuses are fabulous. <laughs> uh, well, um, you know, I did have an amazing time during that six or seven year period when I wasn't working out. I say, you know, I, when you're not uh, being a CEO, um, I got to be a soccer mom <laughs> half time, you know, high school and junior high guys and uh, uh, got a lot of chances to give back. Um, uh, and then all of a sudden I got a ring and uh, our first customer at Ariba calls me up. Now he's a venture capitalist. He goes, hey, Croc, you know, this is Pete. I go, Pete, how you doing? Which, you, you know, we named a product release after him. He was such a tough customer. And he goes, I got to show you this company. I go, hey, I'm not going back and being the CEO. No, I just want to buy you a cup of coffee. <laughs> so he came out, he showed it to me. I go, and he goes, this is going to be like a rebound steroids. And I looked at it and I, I go, I can't be, so come on, you know, just come on the board. So I came on the board. The old rope-a-dope move. The, it, I was totally rope-a-dope, and then rope-a-doped again, where it's like the first board meeting. They go, you know, we don't have a chairman. We need a chairman. Everybody looks at me. I go, oh, okay. And then, you know, all of a sudden, I'm like, going, man, this thing, I think this thing could take off. I mean, there's about 50 people in the company, maybe max. And uh, I said, well, you know, you want to go be the CEO. And I remember... Going home to my wife, Meta, uh, married 10 years, and I go, Meta, they want me to be the CEO. And I go, you don't want me to do that because it's seven by 24, you're up. And you know, once a month you're going to the fetal position under your desk, you don't want me to do this. And she goes, the only thing I know is that you're so excited before you go to a DocuSign board meeting and you're even more excited afterwards. And she goes, you know, I've seen, uh, you know, Father Keith, Husband Keith, Purdue Keith, Sid Mackay, Keith. I've seen, but I've never seen CEO Keith. She goes, I want to see CEO Keith. And, uh, and she goes, plus, uh, you know, who's the competitor again at DocuSign? I go, well, it's paper. She goes, you know, that doesn't punch back. So I go, okay. And... Uh, and I'll tell you, it's been an amazing ride, and I definitely couldn't have done it uh, without Meta because, uh, you know, as all you guys know, CEOs or executives, it's a team sport. So 
uh, it's been, you know, it's been an amazing eight years. So for the CEOs in the room, yeah. or the aspiring CEOs, how have you done it differently this time? Yeah. There has to be this liberation from having essentially no strings attached, where you can come back, you, you can do it on your terms, and yet you've been able to do it all over again. You've been phenomenally successful um, in another version, and yet I have to imagine you've approached it in a very different way this time with that different state of mind. Yeah, you know, every, everything, you know, uh, every situation is different, but, um, you know, in essence, have used... Uh, the same principles, literally the same playbook from Ariba, which was the same one from Erasna, same one from GMF Robotics, you know, in terms of vision, mission, values, team rules, long-term goals, strategy, it's been very smart. Now, a thing that's different is uh, at Ariba, uh, we took the company public in less than three years. <laughs> uh, we were cash flow positive from our second quarter of existence. We only burnt through three million from the time we started to the time we went public, gets up to $40 billion and all that. Um, that this, that's very un-unicornish of you. <laughs> very old fashioned now. <laughs> now in this case, um, DocuSign in this whole category of digital transaction management, it's the biggest opportunity that I have ever seen because literally every company is a potential customer. Every department in the company is a potential customer. And every person is a potential end user. Uh, the competition is paper. And we look at it as a land grab. And, and, um, uh, and just, just on that yeah. point, raise your hand in the audience if you have used DocuSign's product, signed a DocuSign document, or seen it in your product. Okay. That's awesome. Wow. That's incredible. I'm I, sure I saw a couple of people in the back. My chief of staff is here. He's going to get your names. I literally did not say hand. That wasn't up. I'm sure there are some of you, yeah. but essentially to your point yeah. that um, it's becoming ubiquitous. Yeah, it, re it, it, it really is. Uh, and so we've, in, you know, we've invested hard. I'll tell you, some of the things we've done differently is, for example, we've integrated our equity financing strategy with our corporate development strategy. And so what I mean by that, if you look at our strategic investors, Google, SAP, Salesforce, Microsoft, Visa, Comcast, NAR, Samsung, Country of Singapore, NTT, Mitsui, Deutsche Telekom, FedEx, these, all these guys. You're going to acquire the corp dev part. Well, <laughs> yeah, if we could afford it. But, um, but for all, all those great investors, they're also uh, great customers. They've rolled us out enterprise-wide with... Uh, all, all but a few. We have technology integrations uh, too, uh, like BBVA and Citicorp now, and a go to market strategy. It, SAP resells us, Dell resells us. Uh, that's been a great strategy for us in terms of uh, becoming the global standard in this new category, digital transaction management. And one of the other plays that we kind of took from the Ariba playbook is we're building out the DocuSign Global Trust Network. So that is um, frictionless, uh, uh, secure transactions, universally translated worldwide. So now we have about 80 million, 85 million unique users, 230,000 companies uh, have standardized on us in 188 countries. We're putting 85,000 unique users on a day and tying that together. And that's very similar to the playbook uh, with the Ariba network. And I was just talking to McDermott, the CEO of SAP, you know, who bought Ariba a few years back, and you know, we were talking about it's the 20th anniversary of Ariba, and now a trillion dollars of uh, e-commerce goes through the Ariba network uh, every year on an annual basis, and that's more than Amazon, eBay, and Alibaba combined. That so, is, that is uh, awesome. And I think this opportunity actually is greater. So those are similarities. Uh, for the audience that perhaps uh, many of them didn't live through the first generation, or it seems like a distant memory, this yeah. notion of on-prem software. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the differences. Yeah. With Ariba, customer success likely meant something very different. This notion of keeping your customers, making them happy in the days of on-prem software was, was a very different concept. Yeah. Uh, contrast the two if you could. Yeah. How is implementing the post-sales world different in the SaaS days versus the Ariba experience? And you were one of the few executives yeah. that actually lived through that transformation. As a yeah. reminder of the audience, Ariba actually went from one model to another. Right. With the exception of probably Concur, maybe the only two that have done that under the public eye yeah. and to multi-billion dollar outcomes. Yeah, yeah. 
And so talk us through that journey. Okay. Uh, in terms of how we were able to do that? How you were doing it, and specifically around customers, what customer success okay. means in a licensed software world versus this okay. notion of they can drop you any day, okay. and you have to deliver service and product every day. Okay, let me, let me start with how we made the transition, and I'll okay. hit on that, the, the customer side. So in terms of the transition, when you're making that transition, we always said we needed three things. We needed an absolutely strong foundation, we had to have the will as a board and as a leadership team uh, to make the hard decision. And the other thing you need is patience and perseverance. So in terms of a strong foundation, we had tremendous customer satisfaction uh, with Ariba. And a, a huge thing behind that, the, uh, the value and the results are so quantifiable. Um, and we also had a great product architecture. It was first enterprise application written on the internet. We had great people. Our CTO for 10 years, Craig Federighi, runs all software uh, at Apple, reports right to Cook. He's one of the best uh, in the business. So with that, you were able to have a real strong foundation. We also had a lot of cash in the bank. And we also, a lot of people don't know this, but when we started the company, we uh, recognized the revenue over two and a half years. Oh, interesting. So, so you had some notion of amortization. Yeah, so it gave, it gave us a little bit of a buffer and we could see stuff coming. Um, so that, with that strong foundation, then you really had to have the willingness to make the tough decision. One of the things we did when, you know, the whole uh, uh, world was, uh, uh, enterprise software world was coming out, is um, we laid a thousand people off in one file swoop. And I, re I remember going into the board meeting, and I look around the board, I go, how many of y'all been through a layoff? Everybody raised their hand. I go, by the show of fingers, how many? Whether you were laid off or you're part of it, you were sitting on a board with it. We had like 38 fingers went up. I said, all right, now, let me ask you this question. By a show of fingers, how many times did you go, shoot, we cut too deep? Not one finger went up. I go, guys, we're going to cut deep. And we're not going to do uh, death by a thousand cuts. That was actually strategic. And what was the date of this for reference? Oh, to the shoot! Audience? I think it was probably 2002, maybe 2001. So sort of the depths of the economic reset. You bet. And you you, bet. you were using the the market and this pivot as a chance to do essentially a full reboot. Absolutely. And then you know you needed the patience and, and the perseverance. And uh, at that time, uh, we only had one competitor. It was Commerce One. They did multiple uh, cuts. They didn't focus on customer satisfaction. They would overpromise and underdeliver, and they went bankrupt. That was always our goal. And what about for folks in the room uh, potentially making that transition or living with hybrid business models? Yeah. A number of uh, inquiries we get around customer success have to do with hardware models that coexist yeah, with yeah. premium support or with software yeah, to service. Yeah. Um, as they're thinking through the transition, yeah. what parts of that playbook can they borrow from and what did you learn if you could go back and sort of tweak yeah. things even that you would have done differently? Well, you know, I think when you're making a transition like that, you have to keep your eye on and uh, keep the customer's eye on the value that you're providing. Um, because if you're providing a lot of value for that uh, customer, they're going to be patient uh, uh, with you. So I think that's a, you know, a key aspect. I mean, for us at DocuSign, we have three value pillars. One is a huge impact on the bottom line. The other is reducing risk in terms of security and compliance. And the third is a great customer experience. So, you know, it's interesting. It's, I was in uh, Germany, uh, uh, I think it was about a month ago. The CEO of Deutsche Telekom, was putting on his once a year, 1,000 person leadership conference. One day, their sole focus is on digitization and digital transformation. Theirs, and also helping their European customers. And he goes, Keith, you're going to be our first outside speaker. <laughs> and we want to use DocuSign as a case study and your customers. So here's how he introduced me. This is a guy named Tim Hodges. He, he's actually a civil servant uh, for the country of Germany. He's like a Silicon Valley German dude. Uh, he's also on BT. So he, he, he goes, yes, I just got back from T-Mobile's board meeting. I'm the chairman. They own 60% of T-Mobile. And he goes, everybody was saying we couldn't launch the Apple 6 without DocuSign. He goes, he goes, we paid $25 million for one use case for DocuSign. It was to our 3,000 retail stores. Last year, we saved 600 million pieces of paper. We put $200 million to the bottom line, and we took our average signing time 
from about 58 minutes down to less than 10. Because they're doing e-signing in stores for an iPhone 6. Yeah, yeah, and the reason why they brought us in is because their jump program is free, so it's a loan under the covers. So they brought us in for compliance reasons, and also, you know, it's got to be secure, and it, you can't even go down for a minute of maintenance. Um, so it, with that kind of value proposition, uh, you can weather those kind of storms. Okay, and then what about the second part of this? There's the transition the, um, on those values to, for the company to have yeah. the will to make yeah, it. Yeah. When you think about the customer side of that yep. experience, yep. and specifically the customer success yes. role in those transformations, oh. how is it different, and yeah. how do you think about SaaS and subscription businesses yeah. now and what customer success means to them? Yeah, well, you know, at the end of the day, you're in the people business and you're in the trust business. So, uh, you know, and I think about this when I think about the gain site guys, because we're implementing a DocuSign. I was just talking, person who's heading that, who's right here. She, at first thing, she, she, I said, how's it going? She goes, it's going great. She, and the first thing she said, the team is absolutely fabulous. And you know what, at the end of the day, it is about that people, I mean, that's, uh, that's universal and that has stood the test of time. But things are moving at a much more faster. Clip. By the way, I think that's job security for most people in the room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Good they're on that doggy sign account, man. <laughs> Pay big, them well and hire yeah, big people. Yeah, man, keep. stock options. <laughs> Um, so it starts with people, yeah. and then when you think about the role, there, it's a different customer relationship. Yes. When you could you know, leave software in the hands of Accenture, yep. Yep. collect your multi-million dollar license, right. and essentially walk away. Not that you would have, right. um, and people have contrasted the Commerce yep. One story and Ariba story perhaps for different tendencies yeah, there yeah. in terms of the ultimate customer success, yep. but that was a possibility. You could literally yep. be hands off if you chose to. Yep. Yep. In the SaaS world, in the transaction world of DocuSign, you, I mean, you don't have that luxury. Absolutely not, man. I mean, uh, I mean, number of big enterprise deals, it's typically three years, but uh, you know, for our commercial customers, typically annual. But still, um, you're you you have to perform every day, and you know, and ex it's like being a, uh, any kind of private or public. The expectations keep going up, so you got to keep delivering. And the, you know, and I always say, uh, the formula for customer satisfaction: there's a numerator and there's a denominator. The numerator is what you deliver. The denominator is the expectations you set. So, for you sales guys, don't overpromise because uh, uh, that's going to really that's going to come back and hurt you. And if you can over deliver and actually under promise. That's all that makes all the difference in the world. Okay, I want to build on the, the team dynamic part of that yep. in terms of hiring great people and setting expectations yep. internally, externally. Yep. Now, uh, we've had you speak at CEO conferences. I've seen you in action firsthand on a board member and as a CEO. Culture is something that you live through and through. It's a, it's a buzzwordy thing now because people want to hire into culture. Uh, yeah. You were one of the godfathers of this notion of kind of a yeah. modern corporate culture. Yeah. And uh, I've got a quote that I want to pull out. This yeah. was in conjunction Fast Company, gave you all sorts of love recently as the most innovative company, culture, lot of stuff. But there's a fun quote I pulled out of Fortune in an interview, which you said, this was your ideal day. It includes high fives as you walk through the door at work with brilliant people around you, big wins on the scoreboard, and happy customers who love what you're doing. I want to break this down, though, because... Um, People, people don't know how much you live this day in and day yeah. out. And so um, what is this notion of a supportive, functional corporate culture? You know, what yeah. is this idea that it's, um, if you love your customers, they love you back. There's yeah. this dynamic yeah. of, of what the high fives, like that ethos yeah. is at DocuSign. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, of course, I mean, CEO's number one job is to build a high performance team. And I think it's a high performance team. Uh, that's how I look at culture. And by the way, so, so let's take DocuSign, for example. I think... The whole team at DocuSign globally gets that this is a noble cause, to be able to change the way business is done and to change the way people live their lives. We simplify people's lives securely. That's a no, and it's also one of those opportunities that comes around once in a lifetime, maybe twice if you're lucky, <laughs> and, and, and people get that. Then also, on the other hand, the people are extremely competitive. And the only thing that's better than winning a customer is taking one away from your potential competition. Um, so it's with that dynamic. And then the other dynamic, too, is um, this concept of 
than the docu family culture because it is a team sport. And so we don't call the, uh, the spouse or whatever significant other. They're the significance, right? And the families too. I mean, docu kids, docu teams, docu boom, boom, all that. <laughs> um, and if you look at um, that in terms of dynamics, and you know, when we talk about our business, we're in the trust business. Uh, our, wh what we do is provide a trusted service. And we, we kid around a lot about ourselves and not take ourselves seriously, but at DocuSign, trust is sacrosanct. Um, and so with all, you know, with all those notions, and by the way, you gotta be funny too. And by the way, the kind of funny is, uh, is a fancy word from Ohio boy, but uh, self-deprecating means mocking yourself out. So uh, that's, I mean, that's, um, that's, that, that's, and you stir all that uh, together, and then to get everybody to work as a team, we measure our success by our customer success. So let me give you an example uh, of that. It's not just uh, those three value uh, uh, pillars, but we have a thing at DocuSign called our one key metric. Everybody in the company's compensated on, from receptionist on up, in cash and stock. And here's what it is. It, it measures customer adoption. Uh, and we measure that through successful transactions. So you go, well, why customer adoption? Well, because it is the number one driver of our customer's ROI. It's also the highest uh, uh, correlating factor to our NPS score. And by the way, it's the best way to spread the DocuSign brand so we can invest in the product. Um, it, and just to clarify, so everyone realizes that, um, say that one more time slowly. You literally compensate every individual. In the every market. individual off of a, essentially an adoption metric, which is yes. highly correlated to customer yes. success and adoption. Yes, okay. every employee around the world. Okay, and by the way, how about when you're sitting there with the CEO of uh, Deutsche Telekom, or we had the CEO of McDonald's, CEO of Equifax, CFO of McKesson at our user conference here a month, and look him in the eye and say, we are totally aligned with you, everybody in the company is. Because for them also, it's all about adoption, because now it's about speed. Because they're either gonna they're either gonna uh, be disrupted, or, or they're gonna take disruption and use it as a strategic offensive weapon against their competitors, and you know that that's why uh, uh, if if you look at for example our our sales it's it all starts at the top with the CEOs because that's their number you know let me put it this way I'd say literally almost every Fortune. 500 CEO within their top three initiatives is their digital transformation. And if it's not, then they have a guy who reports right to him who's their chief digital transformation officer. And they look at DocuSign as the catalyst uh, for their digital transformation. And the, the CEO of Deutsche Telekom, Tim Hodges, so a little bit after I spoke, he goes, yes. He goes, here's what we've learned from DocuSign, is that in order to steer the ship, it has to be moving. And the way you get it, actually said, look at Deutsche Telekom is a Mercedes. And I'm going to steer the Mercedes, it has to be moving. <laughs> and, and he goes, what DocuSign has taught us, the way to get it moving is through quick wins. That gives us momentum. Because this is not like a five-year ERP implementation or a two-year CRM. We can DocuSign able to C-suite in hours a department in days, you know, some weeks. So, um, you know, so being part strategically for those customers in terms of being the callous or digital trans Seeing their adoption drives yeah. their success. So I want to ask um, that question of the audience, and I'm expecting yeah. the inverse of our prior hands raised, which is uh, raise your hand if your company broadly, all employees are compensated on some form of adoption or product usage uh, within the company. Raise your hand. Wow, I see a few hands. Come on, it's DocuSign. Well, no, it's interesting. <laughs> as, as customer success becomes uh, appreciated, recognized, and more of a pure organization yeah. within these uh, entities, you yeah. think of, I mean, this conference was a few hundred people three years ago. Right. This notion of customer success right. was just emerging a few right. years ago. Right. 
I suspect that will change. Um, and it's, totally. not, it's not right for every company. There's different business models, yeah. different approaches. But as yeah. a concept, this notion of yeah. the entire company's job is success. The totally. entire company's job is adoption. Totally. And, and it, it makes the, absolute sense. The beautiful thing is that, you know, because how do you build a high performance team? Recruit the absolutely best people, get them to work together as a team, and set a crystal clear direction, right, with a play. So get them to work together as a team. By the way, nothing gets them work better than all focusing on one thing, especially if it's external, especially if it's the uh, customer, and especially if it's measurable. And by the way, how about uh, teamwork through functional departments? And so, and when we, when we do our annual performance uh, reviews, which we uh, are uh, right now in the process of finishing up, what did you do to contribute to customer adoption, the OKM metric, right? And everybody can. Pretty provocative and pretty awesome. Uh, we've got a stable of great CEOs behind us that are about to come on, but um, I've got one last question for the group, which was my other surprise. Uh, in October, when uh, seeing you in action again as CEO, uh, just seeing how much you love it, you live it, the energy, how the company and the room feeds off of you as a leader, um, I was surprised when you announced you were gonna step down. And I know that's too strong of a word perhaps, but uh, to, um, make room to still be involved with the company for many years, but as chairman yeah. this time. Uh, explain your thinking there, and what do you want to see from DocuSign over the next many years, yeah. as you're clearly not gonna uh, yeah. run away from the company? Yeah, well, you know, uh, it shouldn't come as a surprise to you. Uh, and, you know, when I originally uh, jumped on board as the CEO, it's like, Croc, just do it for two years. I said, all right, man, just two years. I, I never believed it, though. It, not, I, I know. <laughs> uh, now it's, co then. it's coming up on eight years, and I'll tell you what, this is the ideal time to bring in more firepower. I'm not going anywhere, fully engaged. Um, and if you think about it, um, DocuSign has achieved escape velocity in terms of incredible blue chip customers, the best investors, strategic partners in the world an incredible uh, platform technology, now, you know, millions of users. Um, so uh, the time now, the, the strategic chess moves have been set. Now it's time to execute and, oh, yes, ring the bell. But uh, you know what? For uh, a successor, uh, for me at DocuSign, the next CEO, I, I want whoever that is to have the honor of ringing that bell, because chances are they probably haven't done that before, whether they come from a public company or a private. So I think, that, I think that's cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a true champion of customer success, Keith Crock. Thanks. Thanks.